Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. Well, we have understood what is cloud native and what are cloud native applications. And we also know the various traits that cloud native application has. For example, let me write that down here in order to make it uh, more clear. So cloud native application actually favors automation. So we create these applications with automation in mind. What kind of automation? Automation like infrastructure as code, configuration as code, CI, CD, or we could say uh, self-healing or scaling. Scaling is again, part of uh, healing as well, because if load increases, you get the more nodes to balance the load. And of course, uh, getting the uh, logging information from the cloud native systems, monitoring and logging, everything is so transparent and deep dive like application insights. These applications are uh, smart with the states. What do, you, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> well, it means these application favors uh, stateless. If the ap application is stateless, then it would be easy to scale. Uh, we can easily repair the fail instance without an issue because there is no state to be lost. We can easily roll back if there is no state, right? And easily load balance if there is no state. So. Cloud native application favors stateless. Uh, what else we can think of? Of course, managed services. Cloud application favors managed services. What are managed services? Well, we talked about many times and we do understand these are the past services. That means no to less management overhead. And we can utilize team uh, or, or budget to develop application or businesses rather taking care of the infrastructure. These applications believe or, 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 or we need to prepare the security with the defense in depth, secure each layer of architecture, not like traditional perimeter security, but the identity based. We can also go with the zero trust that all together a different strategy or it favors continuous improvement, which is again, the part of DevOps. Okay, uh, let me write this down, continuous improvement. Well, if you're following me right now, and if you are getting what I'm trying to say, cloud native applications that we understood in the previous video has some kind of uh, attributes, right? So what are those attributes? Let's quickly, quickly, uh, these, these are the attributes that we write down here, but if I need to summarize it or find a proper way to uh, present it, it's the 12 factor application. Well, if this is, this is the uh, 12 factor application metho methodology, for constructing cloud native application. These fall under those 12 factors. I'll share the link uh, in the description, do check it out. It has some, some wonderful factors, 12 factors as the name says, like single code base or dependencies should be isolated, configurations, backing services. It's an entire uh, uh, a uh, chapter that we should be aware of. We're talking about cloud native application. These are the uh, very generalized and the basic stuff that I have right down there. <clears throat> and these are also part of the 12 factor application, All right? So these, you could say like, these are some attributes of the cloud native applications. Now, we know what are the cloud native application, what it favors and with all those videos that we've been through, we are trying to understand it. The best candidate are for this cloud native applications are containers. I'm pretty sure everyone will, will agree with me here 
the best candidate are containers because they fulfill almost all the ask for cloud native applications. Containers provide a consistent and predictable runtime environment, which can help reduce the risk of compatibility issues and simplify the deployment process. Additionally, containers can improve resource efficiency by allowing multiple applications to run on the same host while isolating their dependencies. Now, we do understand that, but what are uh, some good fit for containerization? Let's check, let's check those things are. Very first is uh, containers, we all know what it is, uh, how it works. But if you talk about application architecture, microservices, right? Remember we did talk about microservices in the previous video? We cover almost all the fundamentals of the microservices. So containers are particularly well suited for microservices based applications as they can be used to isolate and deploy individual components of the system. This allows for more flexibility and scalability in the deployment process. And whenever we think of the microservices, we have to run those services somewhere. Containers is the choice of technology there. Then we have uh, what kind of application that we can think for for containers? The stateless. We, we did talk about stateless, right? Right here, the attribute is stateless. So if the application is stateless, it's a very good fit for the containers. Because application that do not maintain state across multiple session, such as web app or, or web application, these are actually well suited for the containers because it also doesn't maintain the state. Containers can be easily scaled up or down as needed and replaced with new instances without losing data. And that's why we, we, we call it, it's lightweight and it's, it's immutable. It, let it go, a new one will be created. To balance the load because there is no state. So stateless, stateless applications are the good fit for containerization. Now applications that need to be deployed in different environments such as on-premises, in the cloud, or on the edge devices can benefit from the containerization as well. The consistent and portable runtime environment of containers can make it easier to move the application between different environments. So we can think of as a portable application so that we can package whatever dependencies we have in the container and keep on utilizing that image into various environments, portable applications. We can also utilize contain containers for the legacy application as well, not for all, but for some, of course, applications that are built using older technologies or that have compatibility issues can be containerized to run in an isolated environment without impacting the other applications or the host system. And <clears throat> your Microsoft was working on this, this technology where they can just create an image of the legacy application and just deploy in the app services during the migration, right? So if... Uh, these are these are few uh, uh, good fit for the for for containerization, microservices, stateless applications, or the portable applications or legacy application. And containerization can be used to create isolated development testing environment, which can easily created and destroyed as needed, because you know how the container works. Different environments. And it, these are portable as well, right? Now, there are many types of application that can benefit from a containerized approach, uh, but it's not always a right uh, choice or the best option. And it's important to uh, go or understand the trade-offs before deciding to containerize everything or an application. Because there are some types of application which are not a good fit for containers. Yes, they are applications. So you need to do a proper assessment. You need to understand the dependencies. And accordingly, you need uh, to containerize. You need to opt for containerization or a different uh, way of making it cloud native. Because containerization is not the only choice. Okay, 
it is one of the best option, but not the only option. So let's see what applications are not good fit. Well, let me get it here. Application that require full access to the host resources. You get, getting the point where I'm going because container doesn't need full access to the host resource. It is running, isolating the uh, isolation on user basis. Uh, only kernel level, kernel uh, level information. So containers are isolated from the host system. So if an application needs direct access to hardware resources, such as GPUs or specialized devices, it might not work. Well, so you need to think what kind of application you have is the name dependency which require the host resources or application that require low level system access. If an application requires deep access to the underlying operating system, it may not be suitable for running in a container in a container. Or if there is a specific OS dependencies, application that have specific dependencies on a certain version of an OS or libraries may not be able to run in a container or stateful application because you know we, we did talk about a stateless application. So if the application is stateful, apps that maintain state across multiple sessions such as databases may not be well suited for the containers. Containers are ephemeral by design so the data stored inside the container may not persist between restarts. So <clears throat> these are a few uh, uh, drawbacks or we need to figure it out whether application are good fit for the containers or not. So if I need to simply go ahead and uh, summarize, uh, host resource requirement, right? There was another point, uh, system level access or OS dependencies or stateful applications. But now, that's not uh, end of the story. There are technologies, there are uh, ways by which we can go ahead and work on the challenges. For example, Kubernetes. Kubernetes provides a powerful set of tools for managing and deploying microservices-based application, making it easy to scale update and manage the individual components of the application. Now, if we talk about stateful application, Kubernetes provides support for stateful applications through the use of persistent volume and stateful sets, allowing for application the need to maintain state across multiple instances. So it's not good for stateful application for the containers, but of course, Kubernetes can help there, right? Now, Kubernetes provide built-in support for scaling, self-healing, and rolling updates, making it an ideal choice for large-scale, highly available systems that need to handle large number of users and requests. And all these things are the attributes of the cloud radio application. Kubernetes is, of course, an orchestrator. Things are running in the deep dive in the container. That's a different story, but that's how Kubernetes work. And if you would like to learn more about Kubernetes, we have more than 70 videos on Azure Kubernetes services on this channel. Kubernetes can be used to deploy and manage applications across multiple cloud providers and on-premise environments, making it a good choice for organizations that want to take advantage of the benefits of multiple cloud providers or the need to deploy application in a hybrid environment. That's not it. We do serverless architectures, event-based and a lot more, which is good fit for cloud native as well. Now, what is serverless? It's a valid question, of course. Serverless is a cloud computing model where the cloud provider like Azure is responsible for executing code or a piece of code by dynamically allocating the resources. Because you need something to run the code, right? But it's serverless, there is no server, as the name says, but there is, but you don't know. <laughs> you don't have the access. So with serverless, you only pay for the exact amount of compute time that you use. So you're paying for the compute time. So from where the compute time is coming, there are servers that you don't have access to. You only need to put your code there. 
So rather than paying for the fixed amount of resources, the, uh, you only need to pay for the exact amount of compute time. That's why it's a serverless. You're not managing any server. This can lead to significant cost savings, particularly for applications with variable or unpredictable workloads. Serverless is commonly used for building applications like web or mobile apps or IoT or data processing and real-time streaming applications where the workloads are variable and high sc high scalability is required. It's important to note that serverless is not a replacement for all type of workloads. It's best suited for stateless, short-lived, and small-scale workloads. However, we do have a durable functions, and durable functions are ready to break that concept soon, I think. Well, that's all about cloud native options, and I hope you like the video. It's not deep dive at all. It's very high level. It's good to understand. 